Yeah, so we're going out to the sewage treatment plant today. It's a great trip. If you're doing this online, you, you won't get this trip. We get a little uh, ambient music. We're getting ready for the sewage treatment plant. We're doing a lot of mouth breathing. You, you won't get the, the sixth sense of the sewage treatment plant. <laughs> Persigo. This is one of the, the finest state-of-the-art sewage treatment plants in the state of Colorado and actually has, has uh, received awards nationally for the work that they do here. Essentially it draws all of the sewage that human waste products out of Grand Junction and it comes down a, a, a large pipe. It's about three feet in diameter and it runs downhill. Obviously we're downhill of Grand Junction. And, and it rolls down here and then it comes out in this area at the beginning of this building. From that point, it enters into the sewage treatment facility. The facility itself is a, is a dynamic flowing system. So as the, what comes in is pretty much liquid by the time it gets here. It's not sort of the really grotesque graphic images of fecal material that you expect to see. You probably won't get to see that today. Um, However, keep in mind, it also draws water from the drainage system. When you go and look at the drains in your, on the city block, most of those, well, many of them now, do come directly into this facility. And that's the best place for them to go because otherwise the drains go right straight to the river. And a lot of people are not aware of that. They put a variety of things in those drains, and that ends up just washing straight down to the Colorado River. So when we look at it, what you have is a lot of water and a lot of human waste coming down, enters in the system, and it's going to go through a series of different stages. None of the stages are completely static in that, they, that anything just sits in there and gets processed. It's a flow. So the, the general process is that the, the biological waste is fed to microorganisms. And those microorganisms are then called what's called activated sludge. So these small organisms will eat and digest those compounds and break them down into other simpler compounds as their waste products. So essentially what you have to do is take the water that's, that's rich in waste, you let it settle at some point so that the heavy things go to the bottom and the light things float on the top. Take the heavy things out, send them to one area where they're processed by microorganisms and take the light floating material and send it to another area where it gets processed by microorganisms. It's called an activated sludge system. The activated part means that they use live organisms to do it. And uh, from there, it flows through a series of stages. Now, the interesting thing is that when production increases, say it's graduation weekend up at Mesa and everyone has a visitor in town or 10, and they all come in and then there's a lot more waste being generated. In that case, the system can do a couple of different things. They can flow more quickly if they need to by changing the conditions of each of the tanks along the way and therefore processing the sewage more quickly. They can also have, they also have some storage tanks that are on that side where they can temporarily put large quantities of the waste so that it doesn't all have to enter at the same time into the system. That becomes a particular problem during a rainstorm. You get a lot of water coming down through here in addition to the waste that's there. And so all that is contaminated water that needs to be processed and needs to be run through the system. Okay? So the first place that we go is going to be the, uh, the, the, in, the input pipe up here that comes in from the city. You guys have any questions right now? No, it smells great right now, doesn't it? I don't smell anything. <laughs> wow. There you go. Let's go downwind. This is called three-quarter inch step screens. And all the liquid that comes down, there's going to be a lot in there. There's everything from cigarette butts to, uh, to dirty water to people's feminine and masculine hygiene products, uh, the results of all kinds of parties and good times, you name it. It all comes down here, including that basketball we saw floating back there. And it comes down. <laughs> and so you have to get all those products out. And so everything that doesn't fit three quarters of an inch screen, like plates that are three quarters of an inch apart from each other, and the water flows through them, and of course that material sticks. The plates are set up on a, on a, like a rotisserie type of structure, so that it, it, they roll around slowly, and about every minute a new, a new one comes up, so that the screens are constantly cycling, and as the, the dirty ones move to the top, they get the, uh, 
the garbage is pulled off of them onto a small conveyor belt and then it's clean again and it can be used to filter. And all that garbage that is pulled off, because you can't do use that in the biological breakdown part, right? That isn't that's not something organisms can break down easily. Things that are latex, plastic, cotton, those kinds of things. So those are going to go into the garbage, uh, the back of a garbage truck over here, and it goes over to the landfill. That's the uh, three-quarter inch step screen. It's kind of an important first step. It's one of my favorite parts. I'm sorry, we're not going to get to see it. Oh, no. But maybe we'll get to see some things that slip past it. Okay, so let's go take a look. The building that's behind me is the one that contains the grit removal basins. And the grit removal basins are really, really smelly. I don't know why they smell so bad, but they do. They're essentially two, well, there's four large tanks that are circular in shape. And inside comes everything out of the step screens into that area. And that's where the heavy grit material like rocks and sand and gravel and inorganics will drop to the bottom and they're pulled out. The system works just like you have at, so you have leach lines at home, if you've ever seen a sewage system that's made independent out of, a, of, a, of a major one like this, it's always the same sort of idea. You move water out into a big tank where it sits still. When it sits still, the heavy things go to the bottom, and then there's typically a little layer at the top where water pours off at the top. So anything that's on the surface can pour off, so the lighter weight floating things go off the top and the heavy things sit at the bottom. And then these can be drained, they have a scraper that moves around the bottom of the tank to pull the things off the bottom and then they're trucked off to the landfill as well because that's just inorganics that aren't going to be part of this process. That's the grit removal basins. Hey, we're on our way to the primary clarifiers, so come on! Primary clarifiers are quite possibly the most exciting part of the sewage treatment facility because it's here that the real action happens when it has a breakdown of nasty biological material that you produced at home and you sent down here for someone else to deal with. Well, this is where they deal with it right here. Primary clarifiers are where that, that organically rich material comes in we're going to put it into a great big swimming pool size space and then let the heavy stuff sink to the bottom again. This time we're going to give it a lot of time to sink. This is going to be the sort of meaty, pulpy stuff, I guess you could say. It's really going to go to the bottom. We're going to let the light, oily, greasy stuff float to the top. Well, what do you do with all that heavy, pulpy, greasy stuff? not greasy, it's just heavy, okay? The grease stuff's on top. <laughs> what do you do with, with that heavy material that goes to the bottom? And from these two primary clarifiers, it's pulled off and taken out to what's called the anaerobic digesters. Now, the digesters that are anaerobic are over there behind you, and we'll get to those last on the tour, but they're those two big round tanks over there. And they use methanogens. They are bacteria that produce methane in an anaerobic environment, meaning there's no oxygen in their environment. So those tanks are very specialized. And they are able to reduce the bulk of that material, which is about 80% of the total sewage treatment plant mass, the, the mass, the biomass they treat, goes to those anaerobic digesters. That's most of it. It's the bulk. It's the fiber. It's the... Uh, the good stuff gets taken care of over there. The cool thing is it makes methane gas which gets flamed off in what I call the eternal torch of Persigo. <laughs> this is what I like to call sewage treatment surprise. We just pick a door and we see what's behind it. Oh, that's great. Hold your nose. <laughs> <laughs> feel stable. This is great, you know. This bridge is only good for ten people. <laughs> Wow. 
What do you think of the Brasigo sewage treatment plant? I think it's disgusting. Pardon me, excuse me. Whoa! This is where the, the fats, oils, and greases, they go around that arm and they get brought into this inside piece. And you can see fats, oils, and greases. Fog is a way of remembering it. Floating around. And a cigarette butt. Yes. Yeah, that should be a ball of grease, uh, of fats, oils, and greases. I don't know, though. It doesn't look like it. What do you think it is? A ball of lint or something? That'll work. Hello? The building behind me are the anaerobic digesters. Notice that the, they're circular in shape. And the lids that you see on top of them, notice how you can see the lid on this side, but you don't see it on that side. The lid itself can fluctuate up and down. It moves on a system. And that's because as those methanogens produce lots of methane and other gases, they're going to have uh, gas production. If it builds up too much pressure, if it's not treated correctly, it can explode. And that's why the tops have to be able to move in response to the pressure that's being built up. Now those, those bacteria actually operate best around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so they need a nice warm environment. And this is a self-feeding system in that the methane that's produced is then recycled and used, burned, to heat up the secondary, uh, these, these, these aerobic digesters. Okay, so they, uh, did I say aerobic? Anaerobic digesters. Now we're off to a really exciting part of Persigo, which is what I call the Great Persigo Jacuzzi. It's like a biological organism oxygen bath. You're going to be very excited. Then if you can pan across it, so put the sound out. So this is called the aeration basin. Like I said, it's like a big jacuzzi for microorganisms. You can think of it as a public service for them. Uh, but in fact, it's serving us in a very nice way. This is where the sludge gets activated. And by the sludge, I mean the biological fecal material coming downstream. It comes in here, and what they do is they put in a whole diversity of microorganisms. Protozoans, bacteria, a variety of different things. All organisms that thrive on oxygen. And what they do is they put them in this environment, and then they add a bunch of oxygen, like a bubble it, like the bubbles in a jacuzzi. And there's tons of oxygen in this water, more than they need. And uh, that makes them very happy. So they feed and reproduce and they go nuts in here. And what they want them to do is eat all of that organic material and then defecate it as more simpler molecules or if nothing else, just ingest it into their bodies and incorporate it as part of them. And then they can be exported and dealt with in the next stage. And that's what we do here, the aeration base.